Hi everyone. My name is Iman. I'm 29 years old and I'm co-founder of Ruang Guru, or in English, it means teacher's room. We're the largest online education platform in Southeast Asia, and we've been serving over 20 million students in Indonesia, Vietnam, and Thailand. From where I come from, people often think that I'm the poster child. When people think about someone who is young, someone who is successful, someone who has a lot of achievements, they often refer that to me. It is both an honor, but also a struggling moment for me, because I know that I, I'm not like this you know, overnight. There are a lot of process, and sometimes it involves painful moments, rejections, and disappointments. And that's what I want to talk about today. All of us, no matter at what stage of life we are, we're always going to face what we call rejection. And in fact, there are a lot of things that made me who I am today actually were rooted from the rejections that I had in the past. I like to bring a few examples of my past experience. The first example was in 2004. At a time, I was still in seventh grade and I was running for president of Students Council in my school. I didn't have much expectations to begin with, but I was just want to try it out. I wanted to test my ability, my potential, and, and if you know, I was lucky, then I will be able to change something about my school. As part of the process, I had to campaign and I had to make a speech in front of a lot of people. And I prepared, I thought about, you know, what I was going to say, and I was ready. While giving the speech, I was confronted by an incident that I still remember up to today. I was pelted with food while giving a speech during the campaign. During that moment, I was trying to be strong. I was trying to look okay, but deep down, I was very frustrated. I cried inside of my heart. And by the end of the speech, you know, I ran over, I cried, um, and not many people knew that at the time I was very, very hurt. Long story short, I was the last in the election and I didn't get elected as the president. But this experience left a scar in me. I was afraid of talking to public. I tried to um, hide myself from the public. I tried to, you know, just basically focus on myself. A year later, I had a mentor and my mentor told me that I shouldn't give up because if I give up, it means that I agree with what people think about me. And if I want to show something different, I need to be brave. I need to reflect on what could I potentially improve. So, I try to identify, you know, areas of improvements. I try to think about, you know, is there something wrong with how I built relationship with my friends? Is there something wrong with how I deliver my speech so that people, you know, make a joke about how I, uh, how I presented myself? And through that experiences, I trained myself very, very hard. Every single day, I look at, you know, a lot of people who are great public speakers, I look at how they basically built their stories, how they built the narratives, how they deliver the speech. And I tried to practice every single day so that one day, if I were given a chance to speak in public again, I will be a different person. I will be someone who is brave, someone who is confident, and someone who has substance. Long story short, in 2011, I was presented with an opportunity to deliver a keynote speech at the United Nations General Assembly. I was speaking in front of the presidents, you know, ministers, and all the important people. And I realized that in that moment, that I wouldn't be able to you know, speak confidently without being confronted with that incident that happened in 2004. Second example was in 2006. I still remember at a time that I was preparing to get into the high school that I was really looking for. I prepared myself and <laughs> given my academic accomplishments in the past, I was very, very confident. I knew that if I had worked hard enough, I would get what I wanted. So I studied hard. I studied very, very diligently and I was not afraid of any kind of exam that happened at a, at a, at a time. Long story short, um, I got my score from the final exams. The score was pretty good and I thought, you know, it was enough um, to help me getting in into my dream school. So when I applied to the high school, um, I thought, you know, um, I will get in, right? 
Um, and long story short, you know, a few days after applying, the result was announced. There was a poster that was put in front of the school, um, listing every single person and rank every single person who got into the school from rank number one to 260, because they said that there will be 260 people who will get into the school. And I was rejected. I was a number 262. And when I look at the announcement, I found out that I was in the number 262. So I was rejected. I was very disappointed. I was again hurt because I thought, you know, I had worked very, very hard. And why I'm still rejected. But I think God had a different plan for me because two people who were supposed to get into the school was um, withdrawing their applications because they would have to move um, outside of the city. So I got into the school apparently. And on the first day of the school, during the orientation, I found out that, that it's actually not 260 people who got into the school, but there, are, but there were 320 people. So there were 60 people who got into the school because of nepotism and corruption. Either their parents were linked to the school administrators, or they're basically the son or a doctor of someone, right? Or because they basically paid more to get into the school. So I was very, very disappointed. And in fact, I was actually very, very mad at the time. So I remember that after finding out about that, I went to the headmaster's office and I asked him a question. Why there were, why there are 60 more people that were not listed on the announcement, but get into the school? And he made excuses. He made a lot of, you know, reasons, you know, oh yeah, because we had, you know, quota for, you know, the son of a teacher, we had a quota for the son of the, you know, public officials and so on and so forth. And it made me very, very disappointed because if, you know, if, if there are, if, if, if not because of the two people who withdrawn from the process, I would not get into the school. So I told him right away without really thinking much about what's going to happen. I told him, you know, sir, um, technically, I'm the most stupid person in the school at the moment because I'm, I, I, because I'm ranked in the, in, in the last position. But I will show and prove to you that if I were not given this opportunity, that you will regret. I will prove to you that in three years in high school, I'll come on top, I'll graduate as the best student, and I'll try to make the schools proud of me. And then I basically slammed the door and then left him um, in the room. I had no idea what I was thinking at the time, but I was just so mad. So during three years of school, I made the whole process become like a battleground for me. I joined a lot of competitions. I tried to basically study very hard. I think I still remember that during my high school, I joined probably like 30 or 40 competitions and I won most of the time. And you know, I competed not only in Indonesia, but also in other countries. And Long story short, after three years, I became the best graduate, not only in my school, but also in my whole province. And I was offered an admission before I was graduating to the top university in the country with a full scholarship. And I still remember that if it was not for that moment, that moment of feeling being rejected uh, for something that you had worked long enough, I would probably, you know, still working very hard in school, but it will be different. Uh, the motivation will be different. And I probably wouldn't, you know, work as hard as, as, as I was um, to the extent that basically, you know, it brought me to an opportunity that I never dreamed of before. The third example was in 2013 when I just graduated from university. I thought I got myself covered. I had a long CV. Um, full of accomplishments and extracurricular activities. Uh, when I was in college, I was the national best student, uh, which means that I had the most outstanding achievement both in academic and extra extracurricular in the entire nation. I graduated early. Um, I had a very strong GPA and so on and so forth. So I thought I, I got myself covered. I thought there's no way that I will be having a difficulty to get a job. So at the time, I really wanted to work in education. I knew that at some point, I wanted to shape the policy of education in my country. And at the time, I thought, you know, the best learning opportunity to learn about education 
is basically by teaching in the classrooms. I wanted to know how a good classroom experience is supposed to be delivered. I don't want to be that policymaker who thought that they know about education, but never have an experience of dealing with kids and dealing with education at a smaller scale, like a classroom. So I thought I wanted to become a teacher and I wanted to have that experience. So I applied to several schools to become a teacher. Most of these schools that I applied to didn't respond. So I guess they were not even interested to explain why I was not qualified. Only one or two responded at a time with a very brief response that, you know, sorry, your background did not qualify for the job. You're not fitting for the job. And I was frustrated, right? Because I thought, you know, I had myself covered. You know, what, 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 are you what are you still looking for? And because for my whole life, I've always been, you know, starting everything by myself, you know, being the leader in this organization, setting up my own charities and so on and so forth. So I thought for the first time, you know, I really wanted to work for someone. I really wanted to be mentored. I really wanted to have an experience of, you know, working under someone's supervision because I think that skill will be relevant for me in the future. So I tried to apply to a couple of nonprofits as well. And I, because I wanted to work so badly in a hope that I could learn from someone more experienced. And they didn't also respond for months. So technically I didn't know whether I was rejected, but basically no one accepted me. So I got few rejections in a row and I was a person who didn't take rejections lightly. Even though I had a lot of examples in the past that I shared to you briefly before about dealing with rejections, Still, this rejection in particular hit me because, again, my past life taught me that I could get what I want as long as I work hard enough. Yet, at the moment that I needed that spell to work, reality slapped me, and not just once. It took me months to learn to accept that maybe there are things that I could not control, that there are things that were not meant to be, and what you need is just to let go and to move on, until... There was one moment after being rejected, I met with my best friend and we decided to basically start a business, which is Ruang Guru. So long story short, without having an experience of being rejected as a teacher, Ruang Guru will probably never exist. So I told all of these stories to you because I realized that we often think about failures and rejections as a dead end. We often think that people get to successful point because they are they've always been in a straight line nope at least in my case i got rejected which is like everybody else and please underline everybody because real life means a life full of rejections and it is inevitable there will always going to be people who think you are not enough or you do not deserve to get where you want to be and you will always going to find that situation in your life but what makes one different from the rest is depending on how you're going to deal with it, with the rejection. When you get rejected, you learn to let go. And to let go does not mean that you're not allowed to be sad because I was very, very sad. I was mad and I was disappointed. But to let go means you're not stopping. You're not giving up. Not let other people defining what your life is supposed to be. And that's the courage that I had when I decided, you know, to think about, to reframe the rejections that I had for being a teacher to basically start a business. And even up to the moment, up to this moment, I'm still getting rejected. I'm still getting difficulties. I'm still being challenged with so many things that I was not prepared. Technically what I'm doing right now, you know, leading a company is my first job. I was never prepared. I was never basically educated to lead 4,000 people, for instance. I was never educated to run an operations in multi countries. So a lot of things that I learned or that I'm doing at the moment is something that I learned on the job. And throughout the process, definitely I encountered a lot of different challenges. So take an example of what we're dealing this year during the pandemic. When we first thought about the idea of Ruang Guru, we never thought that there will be a situation like the pandemic where schools had to be closed and teaching and learning were carried out at a home. Many have said that the ethical opportunities have blossomed you know, better than ever. And the function and the existence of Ruang Guru is actually becoming a lot more relevant considering that there are not many options and alternatives that can be used for students learning out there. We at Ruang Guru never really position ourselves as an alternative from school. We believe that Ruang Guru does not substitute from school because school has its own function and so does Ruang Guru. 
but what we really do is to be an alternative for the tutoring options where people can look for other alternative for their learning where they can look for you know better teachers or better quality content so maybe students who previously had to go and rely on tutoring to become the only place for learning tools now have another alternative, which is one guru. And it can be accessed, you know, wherever they are, whenever they want to be. And the price is affordable so that we reduce the barrier to entry, the barrier to access. Tutoring previously have only been seen, you know, as something that can be only accessed by people who are affluent or coming from in a superior background, but now it becomes something that is a commodity, something that is can be accessed by the mass. After seven years of building the company, the company has grown very, very fast, right? And 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 we have encountered a lot of different things, but we are always come up strong out of those challenges. Not because we can avoid the challenge, because challenges at the end of the day are inevitable, but because challenges and rejections provide an opportunity for us to grow. It challenges us, it makes us think creatively, it makes us to push barriers, it makes us to think about other alternatives that we never thought before. So for instance, during this pandemic, yes, obviously online learning grows, but at the same time, we also confronted with several challenges. For instance, the majority of our customers are coming from middle and low income family. So given the pandemic and a lot of people are being laid off, um, there's a decrease in purchasing power. There is job loss, there is volatile supply and demand. And it make you know, families like um, the ones that I mentioned before, try to reprioritize their um, um, spending. And it made them to you know, focus only on items that they think are really, really important for them. And second of all, given the given the internet penetration that is still relatively low in the country, it also made us, you know, it also make our job become a lot tougher than ever because we need to think about how we can basically reach out to the furthest, um, you know, area possible, right? And therefore being presented with such challenge, again, it reminds me to the past experience that I encountered in the past. You know, when you dealt with rejections, when you faced with challenges, you need to think, about you know what you can do, how you frame, how you reframe those challenges into an opportunity. And that's what we chose basically. We chose to see pandemic not as a challenge, but actually as an opportunity to reach out to an audience that was previously not you know in our demography or our um or, or our user base. So when the government announced that schools need to be closed and learning activities um, have to be diverted from home we immediately announced that we're going to launch one Guru free online school, which is essentially a live teaching um, experience for every student from grade one all the way to grade 12. We may make the whole school experience and students basically can attend the classes um, from the set schedule, right? Um, and at the same time, we also launch um, learning management system, which allows schools to, um, to organize their classroom activity virtually and try to basically utilize um, our resources in the best way. They can basically just use our videos and quizzes and assign them to the students. So teachers do not have to basically reinvent the wheel. And to facilitate this process, we're also working with a lot of telecommunications provider. We make sure that you know, children can access all the services without having to worry about um, their data consumption, which can be very, very costly. And at the same time, we're also trying to bring in a lot of different partners, you know, government, private companies, nonprofit organizations, to ensure that they're not, um, they're not single person left behind in this process. All of this, while we all have also to work remotely, everybody in the company, no matter they are, they're, they, they, they were working remotely and ensuring that we're still delivering our best to every single student. So from this experience, again, I realized that yes, you know, we are dealing with challenges. Yes, we're dealing with difficulties, but there's always a way to come out strong if we choose to come out strong. At the end of the day, it is our choice. It's our option on what response we choose to take. As an entrepreneur, there are a lot of risks that we have to encounter. I know that 
over 90% of startups fail. And even given the size of the company at the moment, a lot of people think that, oh, you're too big to fail. But again, I do not know. I don't have a certain answer. I don't, I, I can't guarantee that, you know, what I'm doing will sustain forever. Right. Um, and that is why, you know, I always try to open my mind. I always try to open with so many possibilities and every step that the company take, it's on me. It is my call and it is my decision. I need to think about not only what is good for me, but also what is good for the team, what is good for the people that I serve, what is good for the community, what is good for the country. Because at the end of the day, I believe that a good entrepreneur is not just someone who is doing this whole thing for himself or for herself, but there's a purpose behind it. There's something that is bigger than himself or herself. We have a visions and goals that need to be achieved as a team. We want to make an impact. We want to deliver the services for the poor. We want to um, you know, improve the quality of education. Whatever the purpose is, you need to basically line up behind that purpose. Because a good entrepreneur is someone who is not only just confident, not only just someone who has knowledge, not only someone who is skillful, but I think at the end of the day is someone who is driven by the opportunity to make an impact. Someone who has an attitude to push himself harder than anyone else, because at the end of the day, you're going to be your own boss. There's no one who will instruct you to do A, B, or C. At the end of the day, you're the one who controls what you, are, that you, are, what you have to do in order to get things done, even though most of the things that you have to do are the things that you don't like it. For instance, I do not like dealing with legal. I do not like, you know, um, sometimes dealing with numbers, but it's part of my job. It's something that I have to do. And I have to grow as quickly as my company grows because the company at some point will outgrow me. I need to also develop my team so that they will be able to keep up with the different challenges that we do not know for now. And I realized that I will not be where I am today, obviously, right? If I don't have an experience of dealing with rejections, if I don't have the experience of coming out strong despite the difficulties, despite the circumstances that I had in the past. There have been many failures that I've experienced from the past until now. And there are many things that we see initially as failure and rejections, but at the end of the day, it led us to become a milestone for our success. I showed you some examples before. I wouldn't get you know, to the school that I wanted if I were not rejected first. I wouldn't you know, start the one guru if I were not rejected from being a teacher. Those failures and rejections motivated me to do more and to be better. Rejection and failure are inevitable. But again, what differentiates one from one another is how we manage rejections. There are a lot of people who fail to live their dreams merely because they fail to manage their realities today. They give up on their dreams halfway. They don't understand their time zone. And if you see your friends, they might seem to get ahead of you. Don't get jealous. It's their time zone. You just need to stay true to yourself and stay focused and yours will come soon. My second message is that not every plan will go as expected. No, not everyone will stay with you. Not everything can stay in your hands because failure is bound to happen and expected to happen but always give your best nevertheless. There's no harm in giving your best at anything. If you later decided to study, remember that you're not doing it for your professor. If you later decided to work, remember that you're not doing it for your boss either. You don't work for your boss. You don't work for your company either. You work for yourself. Whatever you do, the person who will get the most out of it, it is you. So if you don't get the professor or the boss that you like, then because of that, you decide to give a half big work, your company, might temporarily get bad effect from what you do, but the permanent impact lives on you. At the end of the day, you're building your own career. You're, you're building your own reputation. You're building your own masterpiece. Your work is a reflection of you. So instead of focusing on the drama, I would rather focus on how I can make the best of my work. Because at the end of the day, it's going to be my portfolio. It's going to be on me. So instead of the fact that I will stay in the same company or move somewhere else, this portfolio will be my masterpiece that will be remembered by others. So stop making excuses and start giving your best. And this 
brings me to my last piece of advice, which is try to celebrate small wins. A lot of people think that, oh, you're a natural leader who can adapt easily in any situation. I'm not. I wasn't brave. I wasn't confident. I was insecure. But I forced myself to be brave. I practiced a lot. I prepared. I spent thousands of hours to practice in so many ways, trying to basically learn from other people who have been at my um, foot before. So what you see today is a trained person. It's not someone who is naturally born as a leader. And I'm still learning even up to this point. I'm still trying to push myself to break the limits, the limits that set by my surroundings and sometimes by myself. And even after thousands or countless of hours of practice, I still far from goodness. But every time I achieve new milestone you know, in my journey, I celebrate it. It could be with my friends, it could be with my families or my colleagues, or it could be just you know, with a private note that I write and that I keep to myself, or it could be just a moment of silence. The point is take time to celebrate progress. Research has shown that the more frequent people experience a sense of progress, the more likely they are to be creatively productive in the long run. A small win can make all the difference in how you feel and perform. Having huge dream is good, but getting that big win instantly is something rare. So drop down your big dreams to minor milestones and celebrate every time you feel you make progress. Because that small wins are the ones which will make you keep going. Because after all, success is a series of a small wins. I can't spend time to regret all the things I've done wrong in the past or the bad choices I made in the past. But I also understand that life is mysterious. Every decision we make brings us to another point in life, which might not be the case if we decided differently. If I am grateful with who I am now, then I should have not be too worried about my decisions in the past. Because no matter how bad it was, it brings me to the point I am now, which I'm grateful. All this time, I told myself to look for perfection. I got mad when things did not go in my way. I got frustrated when I have done everything that I could, yet the result was not as I expected. I got annoyed by my imperfection. However, I want to use this opportunity to tell myself and also you um, in the audience that our goal should not be about perfection, but progress, because later in life, I'm sure that we will get disappointed by ourselves, by our imperfections. But I want you to know that if you have done everything and your best power, then the, the outcome is not as expected, you should be okay. You should just let surrender and help to accept things the way they are. Regardless how good you are being trained for something, you will never surpass your passion for something. Because passion comes across when your actions are genuine. And I believe that genuinity cannot be trained. When you deliver genuinely, people will understand and people will get it because above all, people feel. Those attitudes are the ones that lead me to where I am today. And I believe that will lead you to your wildest dream as well. So do not fear rejection, deal with it. Understand your time zone, giving for your best no matter what. Aim for progress, not perfection, and enjoy every moment of it. Celebrate the small wins and use them as a foundation to build the better you. Ask for help, but do not take people for granted. Embrace differences and never compromise your standard for greatness because you just want something faster. There's a reason you are who you are today, and it is not less for great. So stay awesome. And have a great day.